Welcome to another episode of The Unseen Paranormal, where some of the scariest things are unseen. I'm your host, Eric Freeman. Welcome to a special Halloween edition of the show. Today we're talking to independent horror director Richard Bergen about his upcoming film, Fang. In this original and terrifying new film, Billy Cochran, an autistic janitor, starts to believe he's transforming into a giant rat after being bitten by a rat in his Chicago apartment. Then the fur appears. How are you doing today, Richard? I'm doing pretty well, thank you. Well, thanks for joining me and coming on the show and talking about your, your new movie. Kind of making the rounds. I saw you on a few other shows, and so I appreciate you taking time out to come on mine. Oh, thank you. Yeah, no, it's a, it, it's always great to uh, have a chance to talk about things. So you had, you wrote this horror movie. And uh, and you got it made, which is which is a feat in and of itself, especially as an independent filmmaker. So, what gave you the idea and and the drive to want to make your own movie? Well, I think the in terms of getting the drive to do it for me, it's kind of like you know, in a sense, I feel like I have no choice but to make it. Because if I felt you know, if I felt inspired to do anything else other than make movies, I would I would focus on that. Because it's a very very difficult field to make it in so yeah. yeah so i made the movie because i felt like i had to because i felt like i had to be the one to tell this story because you know this 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 story is unique to me it was it was inspired by a lot of lived experiences that i've had although i i haven't gone to the extreme of thinking i'm transforming into a rat but I, I do have high functioning Asperger's, and that was kind of an influence on the main character Billy's autism, and you know, kind of struggling with that internal conflict of, you know, what does it mean to be human? What does it mean to be part of society? And how do I connect with the people around me? And then that internal conflict becomes external. Once he starts to feel like he's transforming into a rat. So, and uh, other than your own story, um, how did you get the inspiration to to do a horror movie of all things? You could have went so many different ways with with telling your story and and experiences you've been through. Uh, what what drew you to the horror movie genre? Well, I think in terms of uh, horror, it was you know because I think the the strife. Uh, the story is very intense and that's, it really pushes it over the edge into horror. Cause I think actually, you know, a good chunk of fang you could really just say is a drama. You know, the, the story is rooted in the family drama and the characters' relationships and how they interact with each other. But then I think what pushes it over the edge into horror is that the characters' lives are disturbing. The characters are very sick. And so they, they they are the ones who push it into the horror genre through their own behavior and their own thoughts. And so being a first time director, uh, how was the process? Was it was it a crazy process? Was it, you know, difficult for you or did you just kinda of get right into it? Well, I think it's always it's always kind of a crazy process. I think overall we were very lucky and unlucky at the same time. <laughs> but no, we had we had more good luck than the bad. Uh, we filmed in Chicago in January and February, so it was cold. And you know, people try to tell me, you know, don't don't film in January or February in Chicago. You're you're crazy. You're gonna get frostbite, but that turned out to be very good timing. Because a month after we finished filming, the pandemic hit, so we got it done just in the nick of time, and you know, so I'm very, I'm very grateful for that. And before filming, I wrote the script over a period of five months. And as a, as a writer, my process has always been kind of inconsistent. You know, it's like I could go like three weeks without writing anything. If it just read ten pages in one day, yeah. so it's 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 always a roller coaster with me. Well, and and having that backdrop of of the kind of bleak, 
you know, cold, white Chicago in wintertime seems like it would lend itself well to the kind of creepiness of the film and kind of the, the aspect of that creepiness that you want to bring across in the, in the act of um, suspense you want to bring across to your audience. No, absolutely. Yeah, the, yeah, the winter, I think the winter kind of setting really is adding a lot to the civil movie, even though it's just not like we were blanketed with five feet of snow. It's kind of, it's more kind of a subtle winter bleakness, but so it was definitely the right decision artistically, the right decision pragmatically in terms of the pandemic for reasons I never could have anticipated. <laughs> right. But, yeah, but it was, but the filming in the winter it did present a few problems. Like we had to be outside. There was one day we were outside for long periods of time, and that was that was tough. And then a couple of days when we were filming in indoors in uh, locations that didn't really have solid heating, like one one house we were filming, and like the heat kept not working, <laughs> and we kept having the space heaters that we had plugged in and then we had to keep unplugging them just to be a fire hazard. <laughs> so that was that was that was experience. What was your favorite part about the entire experience of creating the movie and filming it? But it just feeling of of victory at the end when we when we said cut for the last time, you know, that was that's just such an incredible feeling. Like I'm not you know, I'm not the most uh emotionally expressive guy. I don't usually wear my heart on my sleeve in public, but I mean, after we, after I yelled cut for the last uh, time, you know, I was just jumping up and down for joy, literally. It's just such an amazing feeling. You know, it's like we nailed it. We finished the goddamn movie. <laughs> and it's just, it's just great. But then it also, and then what's equally great is when we're on set and, you know, we have, like, this really good scene. And you end up sitting there in the you know, director's chair looking at the monitor. And the actors just nail it. And it's just an incredible feeling when you're sitting there and you see movie history being made right in front of you. That is just really cool. Yeah, and you have some amazing actors in there. Um, with uh, well, Dil you. Dylan LeRae, he seems like he's going to be a turn into a wonderful up and coming actor and uh just I know, yeah, he really did a good job as uh Billy. And the reason why I picked him as to, you know, play the starring role in Fang is that like I had a bunch of different actors submit to the role through backstage. And when I watched Dylan's audition I really noticed that you know, we really captured the non verbal aspects of the character well. Like, a lot of the actors who were initially, you know, they wanted to do, like, the monologue. They wanted to show, you know, their acting with an exclamation point. <laughs> but Dylan really kind of captured the physicality of Billy better than better than any of the other actors I saw. So that's, that's ultimately why I gave him the role. And Jess Paul, she's the, the leading actor the leading lady next to him in the movie other than his mother. And she, she seems like a wonderful actress as well. Yeah. Just Paul and, uh, Lynn Lowry both did really a wonderful job with their characters. I would say Jess definitely had more of the kind of straight man role, quote unquote, <laughs> is playing, uh, Myra, who is the family's caregiver. And she is definitely the most kind of sane and normal, character in the movie but she has a very important role because she's there trying to you know, trying to help Billy and his mother Tina, you know but then but Myra is a very well-intentioned person but then she's just kind of been over her head she doesn't realize just how far gone this uh, family is um, and then you worked with the, you mentioned Lynn Lowry and she was, uh, she's from some cult classic movies, uh, The Crazies and also, uh, Cat People. And she's just one of those iconic right, horror yeah. movie actresses. And what was it like to work with a, with a veteran like her? Has so many credits under her, under her belt and is such a wonderful actress. Well, I will say this is like when, uh, the first day that, uh, Lynn showed up on set, you know, she's just very 
you know, nice uh, lady and, you know, very kind of soft uh, spoken. And, you know, because she's, she was so nice and uh, soft spoken, I was starting to wonder, you know, can she really nail this role? Is she going to kind of capture the insanity of Billy's mother? And then, and then when we got her on set for the first scene, and she just unleashes this insanity, and I was just, you know, I was just captivated. You know, it was, it was just spellbinding to watch. Like, I was just sitting there, you know, watching the performance, and my jaw, you know, my jaw was uh, dropped, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I think I, I was starting to wonder I might need some kind of surgery to get my jaw relocated <laughs> in place. Yeah, and I've heard other other actors talk about having having somebody like that in the production and on set. It kind of makes them elevate their game, and it just kind of makes the whole Absolutely, cast. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, she definitely she, yeah, she, she really nailed her role, and that's what the other actors told me is that you know having her there was like yeah, they just wanted to up their game, you know, give a hundred and ten, hundred and twenty percent every time she was around. So, uh, when do you expect to have a trailer out for the movie that people can check out? Well, we're still in the uh, post-production as of now. We expect to have the movie done in the very near future, at which point we're going to get a trailer up and running. And we're probably going to have an online premiere, too. So, anybody who really wants to see it, like the whole thing before it gets a more... It, before it gets a wider release, can see the online premiere. But we'll probably have a trailer at some point in the next couple of months. And uh, for people to keep an eye out for it, they can go on the Facebook page and just search Fang. Absolutely, the movie. yeah. They'll go on uh, Facebook to Fang colon the movie, and that that is a great uh, resource for finding out more about it. We have a lot of great uh, pictures and different people who worked on the movie describing their experiences. And I, I wrote some long uh, posts on there, too, you know, kind of reflecting on the, the making of uh, Fangs. That is a great resource for anybody who wants to know more about the movie. Yeah, and the, the pictures on the Facebook look amazing. I'm, I'm excited to see the movie oh, when it comes you. out. And it just looks like it was beautifully shot, and the lighting looks wonderful, and it just makes me more intrigued to want to see it. Yeah, I think you feel that way. You also had a great up-and-coming cinematographer uh, working with you. Yeah, Jason uh, Kranick did a great job with the cinematography. I, I brought him on board after I looked at his uh, website, and it was just like, you know, this is really striking, you know, this is really, you know, the colors are, are beautiful, and this is, this is what I want for saying. I like that, that this very striking look and Jason really delivered every day he was on set and the actor said you know, it was really it was really easy to work with. Everything went very smoothly with all the camera setups and we finished on time and under budget, so that is you know, that's impressive for any movie. Yeah. So and uh so we're talking to you early on in the process. You said you're still in post-production. Any idea when the movie is going to premiere? Well, we're probably going to have the premiere sometime in November. It's still a little up in the air at this point because we've had various uh, delays in post-production, which, you know, that always has a way to take a little bit longer than you think. <laughs> so, yeah. but, but we're making good progress, and we're working out all of the kind of uh stairs we've run into and I'm really I'm really confident that it's you know every time I watch each new edit of the movie, you know, we're mesmerized. It's it's spellbinding and I think it's gonna be really great when it's all done. And uh I know I know this movie is still fresh with you and y'all just shot it. Do you have any plans, uh any ideas for other movies that you want to write and that you want to shoot? Well I do have a, a screenplay that I've almost done Writing. I've been almost done writing it for a while now, <laughs> so it might take a little bit longer, but yeah, it's a uh, thriller, it's called Broken Angels, the premise is that it's about this politician who lives in Florida and he's campaigning to be elected senator, 
And, you know, he's this very charismatic, very suave, very good at manipulating people to get what he wants. But he also lives a double life with this kind of violent predator. And so the, so the movie is about, like, you know, trying to nail him for the different crimes he's committed. But he's so popular that, you know, he, he gets, he manipulates people into being on his side, even though he's just kind of really sadistic, evil person. So that's kind of, that's what that's about. Yeah, that sounds great. I'll have to, I'll definitely keep a, keep a lookout for that. And, uh, oh, thank you. And do you have anywhere that people can follow you to see your, your, uh, future projects? Can they follow you on Facebook and, and the social media? They can follow me on uh, Facebook. Yeah, I do plan on uh, getting a website soon, but that's, you know, I have so many different uh, ongoing projects yeah, right yeah. now that's kind of been pushed to the wayside temporarily. But I do plan on getting a website soon. But for now, you can follow me on Facebook and on the Fang movie page. Yeah, I hope my listeners go and like the page. And, and like I said, I'm excited about the movie, and I'm excited that I got to talk to you before all the craziness happens when the movie comes out, because you'll be a lot busier, I imagine. Oh, yeah, this is just the beginning. Well, thanks for coming on and talking to me today. Oh, you're very welcome, man. I had a great time talking with you. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Stay safe out there. We'll see you next time on The Unseen Paranormal. Join us next time for a new episode of The Unseen Paranormal. Until then, check us out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or at our website, unseenparanormalpodcast.com. And don't forget to like, review, rate, and share with all your friends. Thank you to my friend Chris Lips for the awesome theme music. Listen to our theme song and more of his music at chrislipsmusic.com. And remember, some of the scariest things are unseen. Unseen.